Our unofficial scales or tees is rehydrated up to 152 pounds, Maidana to 149. Top of the rules with our unofficial ringside score, Harold Letterman. The Victor Ortiz, Marcos Maidana fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the Unified Rules City Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A case of cuts caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Entering the arena, Marcos Maidana. Twenty-five-year-old Marcos Maidana fighting for the first time in the United States. Manny, nineteen bouts in Argentina, six in Germany, one in Panama. He's been in the United States for the last five weeks. Your professional opinion, enough time for him to get acclimated and make the necessary adjustments to fight Ortiz. I think it's enough time. Five weeks, I think, is adequate time. Plus, he's been training his head for about four weeks uh, prior to that. Plus, he had a great fight with Gartelic, which was a really long distance crowd run fight. And at least he's trading over here at the same time zone in Las Vegas where he's fighting over here and not trading in Florida or New York. So time-wise and acclimation, everything, I think, is perfect. Goes by the nickname of El Chino. He and his brother, when they were kids, were dubbed that nickname because his friend said, looked as he might have some Chinese blood in him. And he's a very personable young man, quiet, Max, but he's very respectful of Ortiz, saying, I gotta watch out in the early rounds. Well, he says he's gonna start slow, but when I asked Miguel Diaz, now his trainer, how he's gonna fight him, Miguel Diaz said he's gonna go right at him. So, uh, it, We'll see how he starts the fight, but at some point, Maidana has to fight aggressively. That's the nature of the way he fights. His opponent, Victor Ortiz. Victor Ortiz told us yesterday with the passing of Michael Jackson, the king of pop, who performed his last rehearsal here Wednesday night before passing away. He was gonna dedicate his ring walk to Michael Jackson. Popping to the tunes of the king of pop. Manny, when you take a look at Victor Ortiz, he's got that thousand watt smile. He's got all the talent, but from a technical standpoint, why is he so thrilling? I think he has an exciting style of fighting. And what I like about him also is the fact, even though, as Max said earlier, he's knocked out so many of these top-notch guys so easy, when he did have to go a long, durable fight with Emmanuel Clotty, which is very tough when you fight those type guys where you have to throw 10 punches to one, he survived and scored a knockout in, I think, a 10th round. So I feel very good that he's going to be a great fighter, whether it's a short fight or a long fight. Max, you know, it's appropriate that he's coming out to Thriller because Chris John and Rocky Juarez are supposed to fight tonight. A lot of Indonesian population in Los Angeles. John had to pull out because of a blood disorder. He's okay. But the thrilling part here is that Ortiz has this crowd on their heels. Or even that there's a crowd at all. After the cancellation of the John Juarez fight, the thought was, you know, how many people can Ortiz draw to the Staples Center as a headline? And the answer is, a lot of people. This place is not to capacity, but there's a good crowd here. Speaks to the point that Maddie made that maybe Victor Ortiz can fill that void for the boxing population in the United States. For the introductions, here's Lupe Confederas. Ladies and gentlemen, from Staples Center, we cordially welcome you to an evening of HBO's Boxing After Dark being brought to you by Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Universum Box Promotions, La Cerveza Tecate, Tecate, Cerveza con Carácter, and Southwest Airlines, the symbol of freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds for the vacant WBA interim super lightweight title. 
Vice President in attendance of the WBA, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. Supervisor, Jose Oliver Gomez. These bouts are being sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. Chairman is Tim Noonan. Interim Executive Officer, David Thornton. Keeping track of time and knockdowns, we have Willy Arreola along with Debbie Garcia and our physicians at ringside. Dr. Paul Wallace, Dr. Pearlman Hicks, and Dr. Leandro Gatus. The judges at ringside scoring the bout are Marty Dinkin, David Mendoza, and Cesar Ramos. The referee, Raul Caiz Sr. And now, damas y caballeros, from downtown Los Angeles, California, veremos quién es el más macho. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he steps in wearing red trunks trimmed in white. He weighed in at the super lightweight limit of 140 pounds. As a professional, he maintains an impressive record consisting of 25 victories against only one defeat, with 24 of his victories coming by way of knockout. De Margarita, Santa Fe, Argentina. Marcos, El Chino, Maidana. His opponent in the cross the ring in the red corner. He steps in clad in green trunks with white trim. He tipped the scales at 139 and three quarter pounds. As a professional, he maintains a record consisting of 24 victories against one defeat, one draw, and 19 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Puro Oxnard, California. Vicious. Victor Ortiz. Marco. Pasa para acá, Marco. Okay, muchachos, ya les di las instrucciones allá abajo. Huesito aquí para arriba. Los trunks están un poquito alto para los dos, así que dense la mano y buena suerte los dos, eh? Everything about Victor Ortiz so far in his young professional career says too good to be true. At the end of the night, are we going to still be saying he be true? Or is Maidana going to find some things out that we do not know, yet not, do not yet know about Victor Ortiz? Ortiz told us the last time that he was a headliner for anything is when he sang Old Christmas Tree at a school play in grammar school. Ortiz in the white and green, Maidana in the red. Manny, what are you looking for early? Well, you know, Maidana seems to be a little uncomfortable that I appeared studying his body language, so I would thought that if it comes out, he could... If he got caught and leaves him saying by Ortiz, he would be hurt early because he's very nervous. But the way he's fighting, he looks just opposite. <laughs> Ten first round knockouts for Maidana. Remember, 19 of his bouts have happened in his native Argentina. Five first round knockouts for Ortiz. 11 of his 19 in the first two rounds. If, if this is Maidana's idea of starting cautiously, I can't wait till he gets heated up. Great left from Ortiz, then shoots left to the body. Good yeah. left hand by Maidana. Both guys come out fairly dry. Neither one of them is really sweated, warmed up like most fighters do, especially with a fight of this magnitude. But I'm a little bit surprised that Maidana's right hand is much shorter than it appeared when I saw the films in fighting Katelnik. It was a looping right. But right now, he's right. And the left hook that he's, he's landed on Ortiz is a shot that Southpaws never look for when they're moving in. Good stuff from Maidana early here in the fight. Round number one, just underway. Yeah, but RT seems to be steady and trying to figure him out. Ortiz got caught leaning, then he landed a right and a left combination. Counter right, and then Ortiz drops Maidana. Big right hand. 
And his legs are very shaky, Bob. Shaky. He seems to be the worst for where he doesn't seem to be as stable as he as needs to. Reservoir. He needs to hold, or this could be very bad news for Ortiz. Ortiz was down in the Asalas fight back last year. Got up and finished him off, but Victor Ortiz is in trouble. Get Maidana finish him. Ortiz short left. Yeah, good thing about both guys are punching. Ortiz holding on with that left hand. But I think that's smart to try to smother this guy and not give him any space while he's hurt. Final seconds of round one. And every push this round has been a power. What fight. a round! No, 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 no. Victor, put your hands down. Don't bring them down, Victor. Come on, no errors. No errors, Victor. You can do it. You can do it. Don't bring your hands down. Close up your defense. Come up. Come up. You've got to come up. Come on. You've got to come up. Get some water. That's it. Here you see the first knockdowns coming in from Maidana was coming in caught with a right hook that he didn't see because he was delivering his own punch. And then you see it's very similar coming in. You see Maidana land a short straight right hand <laughs> on our tens with our tens with throwing another right hook, which was the same punch that he scored his knockdown with. Ortiz landed 16 of his 42 power connects. Maidana 17 of 61. Each man was down in round number one. And both men, particularly Ortiz, got up off the canvas, not from flash knockdowns, but when it looked like their nights might be over. But, but uh, Madonna seems to be a little bit slower still in his delivery of his punches, even though he's a tough guy. Ortiz seems to be crisper and a little faster with his shots. All right, Manny, you're in the you're in the camp of Ortiz right now. Let me ask you, what would be your game plan here in round number two to start? Well, there's not too much more he can do except what he's doing. I would tell you, if you do get hurt, tie him up. Don't try to cover up because you can't see punches that good. And just keep doing what you're doing. What about if you're on the other side, the Madonna camp? The Madonna has got nothing to lose. All he can do is just do what he's doing, just come out and brawl and hope that he can land the shot because he doesn't have the steel boxing skills of Ortiz or the speed. That is that's a right, looping yeah. right hand. That's what he's got to do. Ortiz that time gift away from another right hand. <laughs> Neither man is really bothered with a jab. All power shots. Good what left hand body. What jab? Exactly. No jabs. If someone was keeping the jab count tonight, they would have an easy job. Is that the kind of thing, though, that could sort of tip the scale in your balance if one of these guys decided to use a little bit of the jab and try to set something up? Yep. No one is shooting any jab. Everything is a power shot here. Madonna walked into a shot. It looked like their heads even came together. Yep, referee, Old Kaya seems checking to make sure there's no blood. Right hook to the body by Ortiz. He's trying to load up a power shot. Maidana, Kevin, right hand, drops Maidana. That came after Ortiz was badly hurt against the ropes. I think that's it. It looks like in his bad. he just said he quit. Here comes Ortiz trying to finish it here in round two. He's got power with both hands. Ten seconds to go. Steps in with the left. Hooks to the body. Maidana trying to fight back. He goes down again. Cannot be safe on the bill in any round. He's up and he 
he's getting his count. Oscar De La Hoya is motioning to Ortiz, pointing to his head, saying, be smart from ringside. De La Hoya Ortiz's promoter. Straight up your legs. Bring it. Straight up your arms. Chino. You're too tight. Loosen up. Loosen up, Chino. You're too tight. You're too wound up. Breathe deeply. Slowly, slowly, bend your waist. He's throwing the round punches. Go under it. Close up. Close up your defense. Get on the inside. Short, short punches. Don't throw from far away. Man, the knockdowns. Here you go. You see the knockdown. And the knockdowns are always coming because both guys are so aggressive that they're going in with no mindset on defense at all. And that's why these knockdowns, every one of them that's happening just as the guys are coming in throwing punches, not while they're trying to get away from punches. It is it's amazing we've had four knockdowns in two rounds of boxing. And both men have hit the deck. Yeah, and they were serious knockdowns, not off balance. According to CompuBox, Ortiz landed 21 of 39 in round two. They were all power shots at 54%. Each man was down once in round one. Maidana down twice in round two. Like Ortiz is trying to box maybe just a little bit more this round. Yeah, you know, he's, he's got to respect the punching power of the other guy. Another guy doesn't have that many much boxer skills. He's a much more cruder fighter. And as the fight drives on, his punches are becoming wider and sloppier, where Ortiz's punches are still short and accurate. So it would be wise for him to make it a technical fight at this point right there and pick his punches very carefully and not get too careless. Good right hand, though, by Maidana. I mean, Ortiz made a few moves that looked a little defensive from long range. Got hit right on the chops by a good right hand. But responds, you see Ortiz's temperament. When he gets hit, when he gets hurt, he responds by attacking. Maybe not smart, but it's fan friendly. That shot hurt Ortiz. You know, before the fight, I was saying that both of these guys back we had a lot of the drama that they've had in their lives has made them create a lot of character and it's coming through in the fight. They both are fighting that way with guys who are determined to win this fight regardless at all costs and has no fear because of experiences they've had in their social and private life. Yep, you saw the feature on Ortiz. Maidana started boxing at the age of 15. Walked to the gym, walked by one one day, said, I'll give it a try. Worked on a farm as a kid, youngest of... Eight brothers and sisters. And Maidana just missed with the counter right. Got the shoulder of Ortiz. There have been whispers in boxing about Ortiz's chin recently. And yeah. we've seen him down and badly hurt in this fight, albeit against a good puncher. Yeah, but there's never punch. been any whispers about his heart, and you can see why. The, it, clearly, Ortiz has a lot of heart. And it goes back to his life. Fought to survive since he was a kid. He takes it into the ring with him every time. The, the punches of Madonna is getting slow and wider now, even though he's punching with a lot of power. It, but, the, you know, it seems like at this point, Ortiz can see his punches and kind of adjust and prepare for them a little better. Upset here in round number three. No knockdown. Folks, mark your calendars. Here on HBO on June 29th, it's a replay of HBO's acclaimed documentary, Battle for Tobacco Road. July 1st on Real Sports, Brian Gubble sat down with sports legends Bill Russell and Jim Brown for an exclusive interview. July 15th, it's the premiere of Ted Williams, a revealing look at the last player to hit 400. August 1st, Assault in the Ring, a documentary that for the first time talks to many of the participants from the infamous 1983 Billy Collins, Louis Resto fight. August 12th, it's the premiere of Hard Knocks, training camp with the Cincinnati Bengals. Five weeks of behind the scenes looks at this rebuilding franchise. And August 22nd, it's Boxing After Dark, our main event features Juan Diaz against Paulie Malinaji. 
Saturday, August 29th, it's the rescheduled premiere of Mayweather Marquez 24-7. It's our all-access look at both fighters leading up to their September 19th showdown, live on HBO Pay-Per-View. We get set for the start of round number four. Let's check in as we get ready for round number four with Ortiz and Maidana underway. Here's our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob, two rounds to one even in favor of vicious Victor Ortiz. Bob, the first round, I gotta tell you, you had to score a 10 to 10. I mean, there just wasn't the winner. Both guys scored knockdowns, but you know, there was just no advantage to either guy. In round two, Victor Ortiz had a 10-7 round because he scored two knockdowns, and I thought Victor Ortiz still won the third round, even though Marcus Maidana's got that sneaky right hand that he gets in. But in round three, Marcus Maidana started to do this. He started to hold, and you can see Victor Ortiz stayed on top of him, got the best of him. Two rounds, one even in favor of Victor Ortiz. A rare even round from Harold. Hard to argue. Both men were down in that first round. Maidana, meanwhile, although he is getting a little sloppier, remains a very dangerous opponent because not only can he punch, but he has, his will has not been broken. He's still in there trying to win. He's not just riding out the, the, the string here. That's, that's a good point. You know, and also, there's been a lot of, to me, seemingly hard rabbit punches, semi-rabbit punches when those guys get punched. One guy will be holding one guy's arm and hit him with powerful shots right on the back of the side of the head. You know, Maidana got dropped in the first round and twice in the second. He hadn't been down but once in his career. That was back in 2005 against Omar Leon. After the second knockdown in the second round, it seems like he wanted to quit. No, he hasn't fought that way. No, nope, no, no. He's got up and fought just opposite. to go in the fourth. You know, I would really wonder if Ortiz would use his right jab a little bit more and, and utilize that, and, and, and I think that would change the whole fight to some degree, and then he would be able to land a nice, clean, precision-type punch. According to, the way it's going now, anyone can catch anyone the way these two guys are fighting. According to copy box, the two have landed a combined three jabs so far in the fight. Out of a possible 48 thrown. The swelling under the left eye of Maidana. Stop! Double right hand. Maidana blocked part of it. to the fourth. We practice it in the gym, Victor. Practice a lot. React, react. Come on, throw the right up top in the hook. Bring your hands up. Bring your hands up and bend your ways. Understand? And get on the inside and throw the uppercut. Fifth round is coming up. Gino, Gino, please do what I ask you. Please do what I ask you. You're walking in when you don't throw okay, your hands, no, no, when you don't move your hands. No. Come on, where are we, Gino? Victor, react, come on, think. Victor Ortiz and Marcos Maidana scheduled for 12. We begin round number five. Ortiz starts off with a jab. Ortiz has connected 54 of his power shots so far in the fight to Maidana's 44. Hey, have we seen maybe from Ortiz who's only 22? You know, a little inexperienced at times where you said get that jab going a little bit, don't play for just the big shots where he kind of drifts away from the game plan. Yeah, but I think he, you know, he's been fighting good. I, you know, just, I just think he needs to box a little bit more because he's still a much more accurate puncher at this stage of the fight and much more precision than uh, 
than Mandana Mandar Mandar is, and I think he needs to box a little bit because he don't need to trade so much. One of the hallmarks of Maidana. great fighters and champion footship fighters is that when they get hit, their instinct is to throw two back, and Ortiz certainly has that component, has that element in his, in his fighting personality. Maybe not always the best idea against a puncher like Maidana. Oh, Tease doubled up that right hook. Man, you saw Maidana cautioned again for that punching behind the head, that rabbit punch. Those are not no light punches. Those are some very hard punches behind the head. Ortez quit fight. He actually was moving like a boxer without boxing. They exchange big shots and then hold on. Now they try to fight out of it. Ortiz is cut on the right eyebrow. The way these guys are going, anybody can go down. These are, are nuclear shots these two are throwing. Now that's going to give Madonna more energy now after seeing the blood coming. Even though he was cut himself with a slight cut, now he's going to get more energy now. Now the question is going to be, is that cut from a punch or an accidental clash of heads? That's a good point, because the hands were colliding as, as well as they were punching. Because if, it, if this fight eventually gets stopped because of the accidental clash of heads, they would go to the scorecards. If it gets stopped because that cut worsens and it was ruled from a punch, then it would be a win for Maidana if Ortiz couldn't continue later on in the fight because of that cut. Stop. Key point. Good shot by Maidana. Right up the middle. Oh, big right hand by Maidana. Maidana cannot miss with the right hand. Victor, how are you feeling? Victor, Victor how are you feeling? We're being told it was Victor, from a punch. Victor, Referee Raul Kaya said the cut is from a punch. With that left. Victor, you want me to stop the fight? I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop it because you're bringing down your guard. You're bringing down your guard. What's wrong, Victor? Come on, Victor, react. React, I'm going to stop it. Yeah. Come on, give it all. Right here, you can see Madonna laying the left hand right on the eye, and that's what caused the cut. No doubt about it. It was definitely not a but. Here we see Madonna come in here and throw a right hand once again, right on the other. Could have cut his other eye, in fact. Tremendous shot. So it's been ruled a punch, and Maidana comes right out to start round number six. Yeah, Ortiz has to find an answer for that right hand Maidana's throwing, or he's not going to win this fight. I mean, he pulls back. Maidana is in figured, trouble. Maidana's figured out he can't miss with the right hand, and he won't stop throwing it. Ortiz is in big trouble, and he goes down. Come here. Oh, it looks like Ortiz doesn't. I think he was waving his hands like he didn't want to continue. And I think stop the left eye is holding up too. Yep. That's too bad. Let's stop it. Yep. They're going to stop it because of that cut. What a fight. We just saw a moment in a fighter's career that could define his career. Ortiz was dropped, cut, exhausted faced with an opponent who refused to lose, and in a moment of weakness, gave up. It's not that he didn't make a gallant effort, Ortiz, but in boxing to be great, more is required of you than in any other sport. More is required than is really reasonable. 
And Ortiz just made a decision he may live to regret. The jubilation in the Marcos Maidana camp. They were confident coming in. They questioned the chin of Ortiz. And they exploited the eye, the chin, and the face of Victor Ortiz. Ortiz was still in the fight. His punches were still, when he was landing them, were still rocking Maidana. Ortiz was still dangerous. Let's take a look at the end of the fight. This is in round number six. Maidana just well, jumping in with punches. Well, he, he took advantage of the situation. But he just picked up where he left off the last round, which was very smart. And, you know, it just this is what happens in our sport. In the other sports, you can say timeout, you're cut, or you're having a problem with a style. Some other player go in. You can't do that in boxing. I mean, there is no timeout. Timeout means you've lost the fight. See the heavy swelling under the left eye of Ortiz, the cut right eye. Sugar Shane Mosley offering words of encouragement for Victor Ortiz, who suffers the second loss of his career. Official time. The stop and cheers out. Ring out to Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, under the advice of ringside physicians, referee Raul Caiz Sr. stops the bout due to a severe laceration over the right eye of Victor Ortiz caused by a legal blow. The official time, 46 seconds of round number six. Your winner by way of technical knockout. And now, the interim WBA super lightweight champion, Marcos El Chino Maidana. Marcos Maidana has stopped Victor Ortiz at 46 seconds of round number six to cut on the right eye of Ortiz opened up. You can see it right there, swelling under the left eye. The ringside physician said the cut was severe enough that the fight should be stopped. It was a clean punch that caused the cut. And although Ortiz came in as the headliner for the first time since kindergarten, it's Maidana who leaves with the headline victory. Let's take a look at the final CompuBox numbers for Ortiz and Maidana. You take a look at the total punches and you see that Ortiz landed at a better percentage, although Maidana, as is his normal case, was busier in the fight. And it was all power shots, as neither man really paid much attention to the jab in this fight. It was power shots. Each guy went down once in round one. Maidana down twice in round two. But Ortiz goes down in round number six, and the cut ends it. Let's take a look at the punch zone. And, uh, Manny, we take a look at the punch zone in this fight, and you see that not a lot of work to the body. These were all headshots. That's where these guys were concentrating on who could deliver the big punch the fastest and most effectively. And Maidana was able to make worth one of those 11 to the right eye of Ortiz to open up the cut, and the 15 to the right side of the head, swelling under the left eye, and that was really the key. Yeah. All right, let's head up to the ring and Max Kellerman. Congratulations, Marcos, on a spectacular knockout win. You were dropped in the first round. What were you thinking at that point? Bueno, salí a buscarlo como yo estoy acostumbrado a salir a buscarlo y bueno, contragolpeó y tiene las manos pesadas y me fui al suelo. I wanted to go find him and then I got caught. He counterpunched me and he has a heavy hand. When you went down, how badly hurt were you? No, estaba bien, estaba bien. Eh, se me aflojaron la pierna, fui al suelo y, y me levanté, me levanté y, y con ganas de seguir peleando. No, I was okay. My legs were a little shaky, but he, he caught me and, and then I got up and with with desire to keep continuing. And you continue by promptly knocking him down. Did you think Victor would get up from that knockdown? No, sí, sí, porque fue una mano un roce y no fue una mano plena. Eh, sí, se iba a levantar. Yes, I knew he was going to get up because it was a glancing blow. It wasn't a straight, uh, a solid shot. I knew he was going to get up. When he did get up, he went on in the next couple rounds to drop you a couple of times. How did you continue to get up from those knockdowns? 
Bueno, tuve, tuve bien entrenado gracias a, a, a Contursi, que estuvimos entrenando bastante, y una buena dieta, una buena comida y, y estoy fuerte. I'm well prepared, well prepared with Contursi, well trained and, and we were ready for a tough bout. Did you think you had him when he eventually stopped fighting? Did you anticipate he was going to stop? Sí, no, no, yo tenía que tomar un poco de tranquilidad. Yo yo lo hacía ra y vi que lo hice ra un par de veces y me confié y cuando me confié me chocó, pero bueno, después más adelante me di cuenta que podía. I knew I could have him and, and I had to be careful, but I knew he was making some mistakes and I knew I could take him and that's what happened at the end. All right. You and many feel you beat Katelnik. You certainly just beat Victor Ortiz. What's next? Bueno, ahora voy a esperar, voy a descansar un poco porque los golpes fueron bastante duros y bueno, voy a ver qué me dicen más adelante. We're going to wait, we're going to relax, and we're going to recuperate. The punches were quite hard, and we'll see what the management says. You are in position in the, in the next 12 or 18 months or whatever this sanctioning body mandates to fight the winner of Katelnik and Amir Khan. Who would you rather fight? Sí, sí, no, cualquiera de los dos, porque Cotelny ya lo conozco y bueno, Khan no se me hace difícil. It doesn't matter. Cotelny I know already and Khan isn't that big a deal. It's not that hard. Thanks, Marcos, and congratulations again. Victor. How are you doing, Max? Okay. You started out fast and dropped him. What were you thinking at that moment? Well, I kind of figured, uh, you know, hey, it might be a short night, but hey, man, he's an experienced veteran, and uh, nothing but all the respect to him. He promptly dropped you, and you looked badly hurt. Were you badly hurt? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said no. <laughs> you know, he, he does pack some power behind the punches, and uh, hey, it just wasn't one of those nights, you know, and congratulations to him, man. But you got up, even though you were badly hurt, and continued to fight hard at an impressed, a Staples crowd where considering you're a headliner is an impressive draw for a young fighter. Were you spurred on by the crowd? I'm not gonna lie, man. The crowd did get to me and it's one of the first times ever it's happened to me, you know. I, I usually keep composed and take my time with it. But for some reason, something inside me just kept saying, I'm gonna knock him out. I can knock him out. I could hurt him. And I fought, I fought really dumb, you know. It was a, a fault on my end. My coaches told me exactly how to fight him. We trained the way we were supposed to fight him. And hey, it was my mistake, not my coaches, nobody else but myself. And hey, nothing but the best to him, man. Uh, congratulations. And you proceeded to drop him a couple more times. Did you think you had the fight in hand at that point? You know, I, I, it's hard to say because uh, I was kind of in a little daze still, so. I mean, as far as uh, me beating him, I was kind of like questioning, hey, I still need to take my time and, and maybe I can hurt him once more and, and then finish it. But I don't know why in my mind, throughout all the training camp and everything, I kept thinking, hey, I have the power to knock this guy out. Let's take a look at the cut. This is round five. This is the shot that did it. Give, give us your thoughts. My thoughts on that were, wow. <laughs> That was pretty crazy. <laughs> now, considering you did climb off the deck early in the fight when you were badly hurt, fighting the days in front of all these people, go on to sustain a cut like that and keep fighting. What finally convinced you to stop fighting? Uh, you know, he, I was hurt. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to go out on my back. I'm not going to lay down for nobody, you know. I'd rather just stay. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop while I'm ahead, and that way I can speak well when I'm older, you know. <laughs> Here's the end of the fight, Victor. Give us your thoughts. Well, my thoughts on that, uh, you know, like I said earlier, may the best man win, and tonight, guess what? He was the best man. That's all I got to say. And, you know, as far as all my, all my friends and people from Kansas, you know, I apologize for making everyone look bad, and uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens from here on out, man. Um, I'm young, but I don't think I deserve to be, you know, getting beat up like this, so. I have a lot of thinking to do. Thanks for talking to us, Victor, and congratulations on a hard-fought fight. Bob. HBO's Boxing After Dark being brought to you by Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Universum Box Promotions, La Cerveza Tecate, Tecate, Cerveza con Carácter, 
and Southwest Airlines, the symbol of freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds for the vacant WBA interim super lightweight title. Vice President in attendance of the WBA, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. Supervisor, Jose Oliver Gomez. These bouts are being sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. Chairman is Tim Noonan. Interim Executive Officer, David Thornton. Keeping track of time and knockdowns, we have Willie Arreola along with Debbie Garcia and our physicians at ringside. Dr. Paul Wallace, Dr. Pearlman Hicks, and Dr. Leandro Gatus. The judges at ringside scoring the bout are Marty Dinkin, David Mendoza, and Cesar Ramos. The referee, Raul Caiz Sr. Our unofficial scales or teases rehydrated up to 152 pounds, Maidana to 149. Time for the rules with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Victor Ortiz, Marcos Maidana fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the Unified Rules City Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Entering the arena, Marcos Maidana. Twenty-five-year-old Marcos Maidana fighting for the first time in the United States. Manny, 19 bouts in Argentina, six in Germany, one in Panama. He's been in the United States for the last five weeks. Your professional opinion, enough time for him to get acclimated and make the necessary adjustments to fight Ortiz. I think it's enough time. Five weeks, I think, is adequate time. Plus, he's been training, his head for about four weeks uh, prior to that. Plus, he had a great fight with Gartelnik, which was a really long-distance 12-round fight. And at least he's training over those standpoint. Why is he so thrilling? I think he has an exciting style of fighting. And what I like about him also is the fact, even though, as Max said earlier, he's knocked out so many of these top-notch guys so easy, when he did have to go a long, durable fight with Emmanuel Clotty, which is very tough when you fight those kind of guys where you have to throw 10 punches to one, he survived and scored a knockout in that back of 10th round. So I feel very good that he's going to be a great fighter, whether it's a short fight or a long fight. Max, you know, it's appropriate that he's coming out to Thriller because Chris John and Rocky Juarez are supposed to fight tonight. A lot of Indonesian population in Los Angeles. John had to pull out because of a blood disorder. He's okay. But the thrilling part here is that Ortiz has this crowd on their heels. Or even that there's a crowd at all. After the cancellation of the John Juarez fight, the thought was, you know, how many people can Ortiz draw to the Staples Center as a headline? And the answer is, a lot of people. This place is not to capacity, but there's a good crowd here. Speaks to the point that Maddie made that maybe Victor Ortiz can fill that void for the boxing population in the United States. For the introductions, here's Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, from Staples Center, we cordially welcome you to an evening of eight. And now, damas y caballeros, from downtown Los Angeles, California, veremos quién es el más macho. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he steps in wearing red trunks trimmed in white. He weighed in at the super lightweight limit of 140 pounds. As a professional, he maintains an impressive record consisting of 25 victories against only one defeat, with 24 of his victories coming by way of knockout. De Margarita, Santa Fe, Argentina, Marcos, El Chino. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, 
He steps in clad in green trunks with white trim. He tipped the scales at 139 and three quarter pounds. As a professional, he maintains a record consisting of 24 victories against one defeat, one draw, and 19 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Pudo Oxnard, Gully. We're here at the same time zone in Las Vegas where he's fighting over here and not trading in Florida or New York. So time-wise and acclimation, everything I think is perfect. Goes by the nickname of El Chino. He and his brother, when they were kids, were dubbed that nickname because his friend said, looked as he might have some Chinese blood in him. And he's a very personable young man, quiet, Max, but he's very respectful of Ortiz, saying, I got to watch out in the early rounds. Well, he says he's going to start slow, but when I asked Miguel Diaz, now his trainer, how he's going to fight him, Miguel Diaz said he's going to go right at him. So uh, it, we'll see how he starts the fight, but at some point, Maidana has to fight aggressively. That's the nature of the way he fights. His opponent, Victor Ortiz. Victor Ortiz told us yesterday, with the passing of Michael Jackson, the king of pop, who performed his last rehearsal here Wednesday night before passing away, he was going to dedicate his ring walk to Michael Jackson, popping to the tunes of the king of pop. Manny, when you take a look at Victor Ortiz, he's got that 1,000-watt smile. He's got all the talent, but from a technical